Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Love for Frenchies puppy videos. And this is Kishka's Litter seven week old video. They're scrapping. <laughs> this is Kishka's Litter seven week old video. It's a little early. It's Saturday, uh, September 25th. Um, we're doing them early because puppy, a lot of the puppies are leaving on Tuesday. So I have to be able to get all the, no, no, guys. No, no, no. We don't chew on the fish pads. They're obsessed with these fish pads. No, no. They just got in trouble a little bit ago for chewing on them. <laughs> Look at Elroy, he's running. Nope. Come on. Anyway, we're doing them a little early. Doing them a little early because I have to do CDs, picture CDs, video CDs before Tuesday, and that all takes time. That all takes time. They're right in the hellion stage now. Yeah, just want to tear up the fish pads, tear up the doggy potty, play, 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 scrap, scrap, scrap. <laughs> yes. We're going to go over each puppy. We got a good weight uh, gain as well this week, so puppies are doing really good. You, none of you heard from me uh, for the vet check last week. Um, hey, you. You don't know pee pee on the beds. No, no, Paris. You pee pee on the doggy potty. Um, good thing I hadn't changed it yet. <laughs> but that's pup. That's a puppy thing for you. Yep. Peeing on the beds, which is, surprises me because usually they don't like to pee where they sleep. So that might explain why they're all laying by the door because we got some of them peeing on the bed yet. Yes. Potty training is going so-so. Um, still get a lot of pee on the doggy potty but on the floor. But that might just be because, uh, hey guys, they're trying to bite my toe. There's so many of them. And the doggy potty, I sometimes I can't keep up with it, you know, and they don't want to go on a nasty doggy potty, so they go on the pitch pads. But like I've said before, that's what the pitch pads are for. So, yep. So anyway, um, yeah, puppies are leaving. A lot of them are leaving Tuesday. So we're doing the videos early so I can uh, get everything around and ready for them to leave. Yeah, so what you doing, Kodak? Okay, so we're going to go over each puppy's weight, uh, starting with Tessa, and this is Tessa, and this is Tessa, yeah, Tessa's still available, by the way, yeah, she's a precious little girl, follows me around all the time, and Tessa's weight is 4 pounds, 0 .08, she was 3 pounds, 0 .52 last Tuesday, she's 4 pounds, 0 .08, or 4 pounds, 0 0.08 this week. That was Tessa, and we're looking for Paris, and she's right down here. But she's another one. She cracks me up. Yeah, this is Paris, and then Paris's weight was two pounds 0.48 last week. She's two pounds 0.86 this week. Look at them. They're all down here by my feet. Hey guys. What are you doing all down here? Gam can't take your video. I knew this was going to happen because it happens with every litter. I have to keep walking in order for them to um, get away from me. But anyway, we'll just go down the line and get their weights. And then I'll walk, see if we can't get them on the video. Okay, next in line is Skylar. And Skylar, she's down here. Her weight last week was 3.28, uh, 3 pounds, 0.28. This week is 3 pounds, 0.86. No, no, guys, you don't bite my toes. This is Skylar. No, no. You don't bite my toes. No, no. Damn, I didn't mean to tap you that hard, but no, no, they don't. That hurt. <laughs> that hurt. This is Skylar. That was um, uh, Tessa chewing on my toes. Yes, you're not chewing on my toes, baby. Anyway, um, Kodak, uh, Kodak weight was 3 pounds, 0.66 last uh, week. It's 4 pounds, 0.22 this week, and she's right back at my toes again. No, no, Tessa. 
You know two on Gamma's toes. He was four pounds point two two this week. Four points point two four pounds point two two this week. And then we have Cowboy. He's right here, I think. No, no, Turbo, you either. We're at that chewing stage. This is uh, Cowboy. And Cowboy's weight was four pounds point twenty four. Four pounds point twenty four. His weight last week was three pounds point sixty eight. Look at this. Look at this. Who we got over there? I think that's Jackson. I think that's Jackson. He's still tired. I wanted to get in and get the video while they were a little bit awake so I can get it done. Okay. So next is Turbo. Turbo's weight is was two pounds point eight four last week. It's three pounds point three six this week. And Turbo's right here. This is Turbo. He's a handsome boy, too. Yeah, him's a handsome boy. Here comes Jackson. Here comes Jackson. Decide to, to wake up. Okay, and then we have Diesel. And Diesel's right here. No chewing on Gamma's toes, Diesel. No chewing on Gamma's toes. Okay, Diesel's weight last week was 3 pounds, 0.54. It's 4 point pounds point twelve this week. No no. No no. Not on Gamma's toes. And then next we have El Ray. We'll come back to him so I can walk over there. And then Jackson. And Jackson's over here. This is Jackson. And Jackson's weight was three pounds point fifty two last week and it's four pounds point oh eight this week. Okay, and, move, and going back to El Ray, he was thir 3 pounds, 0 .04 last week. He's 3 pounds, 0 .66 this week, and we'll go get a close-up of him. This is El Ray. What you doing, babies? What you doing, El Ray? Yeah, you're just, just, just a little sweetie, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Just a little sweetie. Yeah, they're in for picture day today, too. Yes, and they're not going to like that at all. I was hoping to be able to get them outside. To do the pictures on the in the grass and stuff, but I don't know if you can hear it, but it's downpouring outside, so I don't think that's going to happen. So we'll have to do the standard old way, taking the pictures on the table. This will be the last time, the last video, the last pictures. Yup. Hey guys, come on, let's get get lively and get a squeak toy. Let's get a squeak toy. Look at this one. <laughs> what are you doing, Barrett? <laughs> what are you doing? You're just a little cutie, aren't you? Yeah, she said, don't point that camera at me. Yes. Hey, guys. Yes. No, no, Tessa. No, no. No, no. You leave Gamma's feet alone. Yeah, can't seem to get away from him. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Anyway, so I know you're all pretty excited. What I started to say, uh, none of you heard from me on the vet checks. That, that was because everything went great. The vet checks all... The check, uh, the, the checkups all, we're doing good, did good, no, come on guys, straighten the push pads up so you don't be chewing on them. Yep. And I do say no, no a lot, so they will know what the word no, no is, and you have to, when you get after them, you have to use a firm voice, so they know when I'm, uh, these puppies know when I'm perturbed, I should say, or, you know, if I'm happy, if I'm if everything is okay, because when you know, I I don't pull no punches when I come in here, and you know, I um, they like right now, no, no, bud, Turbo, he's chewing on my toes. I don't know why the such a <laughs> going. Okay, I'm going over here to lay. See, he, he I just tapped him on the butt, and he 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 knows I mean business, but you have to let him know. You just can't say. No, 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 and uh, and the, and the everyday tone that you use, 
because they need to hear that frustration or upsetness in your voice. So when you're getting after them, you need to use a firm no-no, and they will eventually know when you're upset and when, when uh, things are good, when they've done something wrong. I know a lot of you think puppies can't do something wrong, but they can, they do, and then you need to start from the get-go training them, because I hear so many times that uh, puppies are, or dogs are out of hand, and they don't know what to do about it, it's because they didn't start from the beginning. It's hard, because they're puppies, they're lovable, you want to love them, and you, want, you don't want to get after them, but if you don't, then you have problems later on. Because they know they can get by with it. And then they get to a certain age that they are they just can't be trained. They, they've got to buy with it so long that it's, you know, it's, uh, they know that, uh, you know, it's just impossible to train them. So, my advice is to you, it, as hard as it may be, come on guys, get lively. Come on, game got toys. As hard as it may be, you have to start from the beginning. I have seven dogs, and not one of them bite. I mean, if there's a scrap that breaks out between, don't get me wrong, they're like kids. And it, if I see it start breaking, all I have to do is say, hey, in a real loud voice, and they stop immediately. Because they know I mean business. They know that that is not allowed. They're just like kids. You let your kids get by with uh, stuff when they're young, they're going to be spoiled rotten brats when they get bigger. So, you know, these puppies are no difference. You know, you, um, you can, and, and the thing of it is, you can get after them. You can get after them, and five minutes later, love on them, and they, they love you just the same, unconditionally. So, you know, you can't have the, the uh, attitude, oh, I, I don't want them to not like me, because if I get after them, then they won't like me. You can't have that. Because, no, no, Jackson, not on the doggy potty. You can't let them get by with stuff. If you see them chewing on a knob on your uh, stand or whatever, you get after them. Because they know what no-no means. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Let's get lively. Here. Here we go. We've got toys. Here we go. Toys again. Yeah, toys again. Come on. Come on, everybody. Want toys? Yes, you want toys? Come on, everybody get the toys. Everybody get that toy. <laughs> yes. Oop. Everybody get the toys. See how I got after them? And they come right back to me. You know, that's not going to change anything. That's not going to change anything. You just need to be firm with them when you mean business. And, you know, you'll have a good puppy once they get old, adult. You'll... Like I said, I have seven dogs. They all know when it's bedtime. No, no, Jackson. They all know when it's bedtime. And, you know, if we, uh, they get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Like, I have a howler. I know you've heard them in previous videos. But every morning, sometimes at 5.30, she howls to wake me up. So they get up at 5.30. Some, uh, 6 o'clock is supposed to be the, the time they get up. And they go to bed at 5 at night. I know some of you think, man, that's awful early. But all they do is lay around and sleep come that time. And actually, they look at me like they're ready to go to bed at that time. And not only that, like I said, I'm, I'm around seven dogs all day long. That's my quiet time. That's my time to unwind after the day. And, you know, we, I, this is something we've done since they are puppies. And they're all familiar with it. You create the routine for them. You create whatever routine you want them to have. If you know their eating habits, right now I'm free feeding, but a lot of uh, you probably may want a time feed. My dogs are time fed because I have seven dogs. They all have individual that that way. There's no no fighting over the food. They all have individual dishes. And we, they eat at, uh, when I first get up in the morning, at 6 o'clock, we've got uh, Paris and, uh, let me see, Diesel scrapping. They all get up at 6 o'clock. 
Our routine is a little bit off because of puppies, because now the first thing I do is get up after uh, the howler woke me up. <laughs> Come in here, put the food down for the puppies, and then clean the dog and potty, and then I go let my dogs out, and then they get fed and stuff. These guys get, get, uh, these guys get treated first. Hot cowboy. Yes. Ha ha. Yes, you're just a precious, aren't you? Yes, you are. I got Terrace over here. Tessa. No, we don't chew on the, uh, bed. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, you create the routine for them. And we eat. Like I said, I time feed. They're, they eat at, uh, they get a, they get a treat, or they eat first thing in the morning. My dogs get a treat at noon. They eat at 1 o'clock, and they get a treat at 4 o'clock. And then that's it for the day. So they know, and they are, and they know. I mean, it's a routine we do every day, and baby, she, she knows when it's cookie time, because she'll come up and she'll look at me and give me this, those big eyes of hers, like, isn't it time <laughs> you know, to remind me? And they know. And so if you got a, if you set up a routine every day, they know they will know the time that they're supposed to eat. They will know the time they get their treats. They're smart. Hey, you guys! Come on, we gotta get lively. We gotta get lively. <laughs> this one's really loud. Yeah, you gotta get loud. Yeah. Yeah, to get the, yeah, get the toys. But anyway, so yeah, uh, they're good puppies, you know. But I have heard where a lot of people have problems, and I'm, you know, and I know where that problem is. I know what, cause, you know, because, you know, I I have seven dogs now, but I've had since I probably got into the breed. I can't remember how many now. I'm. Uh, 2025 and and not one of them has been um you know uncontrollable you know to you know where they you know they and, and be strict with the potty drink you know i mean you let them know that that's not acceptable for them to pee in the house you know i mean and when you take them outside they should be going outside at this age every half hour Every half hour automatically because they just squat and pee, you know, they drink and squat and pee, eat and poop, you know, and sleep. That's all they do at this age. So every half hour they should be taken outside automatically. And then you stand out there and, you know, you can't just take them out there and set them down and say, okay, go potty. Oh, you don't got to go, so let's go back in. No, nope. you got to stand out there until they go and then you praise them. You praise them. You tell them that that's what you, that way they know what you want them to do. These guys hadn't been outside, but they've been using the uh, grass turf. But so they're not familiar with what I'm assuming that they're going to automatically pick up when you go outside. But they, you know, I mean, you need to stand out there and let them know that's what you want. They don't talk. So you can't tell them. So it's all in your in what you do. You stand out there until they go potty, however long it is, and then you praise them. Crate training. For those that are crate training, do not give in. First day, second day, they'll cry, 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 and you may lose sleep. But by the third day, things start getting better. If you give in, then you got problems. Because then, like I said, they're smart dogs. They know you're going to give in if they keep carrying on. So they'll carry on and carry on and carry on until you give in. So do not give in. If you're crate training, do not give in. Deal with it. It'll only be bad for the first couple days. By the third day, things should start getting easier. So anyway, yeah. So that's where, that's all my advice to everybody that, you know, that's watching. Uh, like I said, I have seven dogs and they're very well behaved. Um, I got some, um, you know, a couple that are barkers that I'm trying to get under, get, get under, get that, kick that in the butt. But barking is hard, really hard, because uh, unless you use a bark collar, and I don't really like to use them. I tried that. Hey, hey Jackson. No, we don't be mean. 
We don't be mean, bud. Yeah. You guys are just all sleeping again. Let's see. Let's get another toy out here and see if we can get them out here. Can you want toys? Come on. <laughs> they want to go sleep. Come on, guys. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't want to, uh, you know, that's just my advice for everyone that's getting puppies is my experience with them. And like I said, I've been doing this for over 20 years, or not over 20 years. I've been breeding since 2000, well, I've had French Bulldogs. No, no. I've had French Bulldogs since, I actually had two as pets before I even started breeding. And then I went into the breeding. But I've been breeding since 2012. So quite a, way, quite a while. And with my experience, like I said, you want a good puppy, a good dog, start, start right in from the get-go. Letting them know what you, let them know um, you mean business. Don't let them get by with it. And they will love you just as much. You know, and, and you will love them just as much because they will be good dogs. <laughs> So, but anyway, that's my advice. We are going on 22 minutes. And uh, so this is Puppy's Last Video. And my next letter coming up will be with Baby and Remy. And uh, that's probably not going to be until the first, uh, uh, she doesn't come in heat, I don't think, until December. So it's going to be right around probably February before those puppies are born. It gives me a little bit of a break between now and then. I've had uh, pretty much two litters back to back, and I'm ready for a little bit of a break. Ready for a little bit of a break. And these guys are all going to sleep, so um, I'm going to close the video. And we'll see you all on, pup, on Remy and uh, Baby's uh, first puppy video. So we'll see you all then. Bye-bye.